All right, welcome back to another video. Now, um, can we do some more carbon fiber work today? Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not the first time I'm doing this. I've actually done this part once before and I screwed it up big time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be making a carbon fiber version of this scuttle panel or cowl, whatever you wanna call it, on the front of the car above the bonnet. Now, um, I'm not gonna make a mold of it. It doesn't matter that it's gonna be slightly oversized because the fitment on this thing, you know, I could get my shoe between the shut gap. So it's not really gonna matter if it's, you know, two millimeters bigger, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically, you know, hand lay the carbon fiber over the scuttle panel and vacuum bag it. We've been doing vacuum bagging on like a budget, which is actually quite handy and it works out perfectly fine. It works really, really well. Super cheap to do as well. Um, yeah, I will show you what we're gonna be doing. So here we have our scuttle panel. Yeah, like I said, I messed this up before. Um, so I've got to redo it. Bit of a pain, but yeah, it happens. Vacuum bags here. So these are just off Amazon. They're the biggest I could get. Um, vacuum storage bags. Got everything ready. I'll show you that in a second. What to do is you just stick it in this vacuum bag, seal it up. Use this little port here and use a shop vac. Like that one down there. And suck all the air out. Now the shop vac provides the right amount of vacuum for this process, which is great. So basically you can do this on a, you know, a really tight budget um, and it comes out perfectly. Well, mine didn't come out perfectly because I got two things mixed up. Um, now the components you will need or the materials you'll need, you'll need laminating resin. Again, I've gone for um, easy composite stuff, which is that stuff there. So EL2 epoxy laminating resin with a slow hardener because I didn't want to, uh, you know, didn't want to rush it. I wanted to take my time. See carbon fiber cloth there. Two things I got mixed up with this is the bleeding cloth and the peel ply. Now, once you've applied the carbon fiber cloth, you're supposed to put a peel ply over that, which means once it's all vacuum formed and dry and cured, this peel ply will just, just peel off because it stops you, you know, bonding or sticking this resin to anything else. Then you put the bleeding cloth on top of that and that gets rid of the excess resin. Uh, I got these two mixed up. So <laughs> I just wasn't concentrating. I put the bleeder cloth on top first on the carbon fiber and obviously that acted like, you know, just another layer of like, yeah, material and just bonded to it. So it, um, yeah, it just messed up big time. So yeah, peel ply first, then bleeder cloth, bag it. So, but first what we're gonna do is I'm gonna prep this. So I have got some of this Proplex. Now what I need that for is to run a little lip around all the edge there, just so you don't get any mechanical locks. So when you vacuum form it or vacuum bag it, sorry, it doesn't kind of lip under there and grip it. It's really hard to get off. So put that on and then I'm gonna cover it with uh, the tape again. And then after that, I'm probably gonna put some wax on it. Um, yeah, I know that works perfectly fine and I've done it obviously before it came off fine But obviously I messed up with the uh, the bleeding cloth. So uh, yeah, let's Do that As you can see, the release flange is on there. Not too bad, so I'll trim it up and then I'm gonna cover it with the silver tape and then make sure that it's the right size to fit the bag because it's, it's pretty snug, so um, I don't wanna make it too big, obviously, and not be able to get in the bag once it's all laminated up. So I'll trim that up and then cover it with tape. All right, so it's all, all done now. It doesn't matter that this is a, it isn't completely smooth. This isn't a mold. It's basically, uh, yeah, gonna be like a former. So we're gonna go over this 
and obviously the top's going to be you know uneven but we'll fill it with the uh the xcr resin and we'll smooth it off like we did with a uh with a wing so yeah basically the same kind of process once uh once this is uh copied so we're going to stick it in there like test run make sure it fits in and then uh we can wax it and start covering with some carbon All right, so the next day um, I ran out of time and I ran out of carbon fiber. <laughs> I didn't have enough carbon fiber, so had to wait for more to be delivered. So what we can do now is get the part, the uh, scuffle panel, the cowl, whatever you want to call it. I've waxed it up now. I'm gonna get it on the floor. I haven't got enough workspace area on a bench, so I've made a kind of like a, a nice clean area on the floor with some plastic sheets, so nice and clean. Cut everything out, so put the part on the floor, gonna cover that in some resin, some laminating resin to start with then put one, two, three pieces of carbon fiber cloth on top of it, obviously soaking it in between, then the peel ply, then the bleeder cloth, then in the vacuum bag. And tomorrow we'll take it all out and see if it works, which it should do because it's um, a better version this time. Unlike last time, because I'm a moron, and yeah, we can see what it looks like and then kind of go on from there. But yeah, let's get going. <laughs> see it's all bagged up and under vacuum now we're gonna leave that uh, until tomorrow and then uh, yeah we can open it up and see if I messed it up again yeah that worked um, it's crazy how light this thing is. If you guys are interested in the weight of this, um, this is 400 grams and the original steel one is 1250 grams. So um, yeah, crazy light. Um, still need to trim it up obviously um, and then add some top coat resin and then lacquer it. So after that's all trimmed off and then the resin's added on top of it, it probably just under, well, I'd say around just under 500 grams. 
as this is a kind of a reverse mold, obviously it's gonna be slightly bigger than the original one, but it doesn't matter because the panel gaps on this are so big, it's kind of doing me a favor. Um, and yeah, as it's a reverse mold, obviously with a peel ply on top of it, there, it's a dry surface rather than a smooth surface like that. So obviously got to put some resin on top of that, some, uh, some coating resin, two or three layers of that, I suppose rub it all down and flat it all out. Now I've got to cut out the holes for the wipers and if you're wondering about the grills, so the grill, so the grill obviously looks like that on that, obviously it's solid on this. So now what I'm going to do is going to cut out one large section because there's an infill that goes behind this and that infill looks like this. Now this is the infill that goes behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to cut out one large section there. I'm not going to bother about cutting all those tiny sections out, that's going to be a nightmare. So I'm um, literally going to have that just behind it. So yeah, quite simple. But what I'm going to do first is add some resin to this and start building it up because obviously the peel ply and the bleeder cloth has taken all the excess resin out of it. So it's very, very dry. First layer of resin's on, I'm um, not gonna get a chance to do a second layer today, which is quite annoying because I haven't got time. Um, first layer is on. Once that's all cured, um, I'll flat it down, give it a couple more coats. Um, but actually before I give it a few more coats, I'll trim it up and make sure it fits right. All right, so it's very, very close. It's doing what I thought it would do is getting stuck on these tabs here and obviously you need to trim it up a little bit there, um, straighten that out there. But these little tabs go into like a little recess and they've got a plastic cap like that. And um, obviously they're not the right shape so it's stopping it from sitting in that way. Um, so yeah, uh, not, not too much to do. So just gotta kind of trim some bits up and uh, yeah, we're close. Okay, so um, looking a lot better. Obviously I've rubbed it down, saved you the boredom of me rubbing stuff down. Um, I've got it pretty close. I need to do a little bit more trimming, but because um, I haven't got much time. Um, yeah, time is pretty, uh, pretty short at the moment. So um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna cut anymore, I'm not gonna trim anymore. I'm gonna add another layer of resin so I have two layers of resin on it and then when I come back again, I can trim it uh, up some more, um, flat it down with more resin, just because the resin process takes a long time to dry and I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just gonna like, you know, trim it, resin, trim it, resin. And then, yeah, once it's all trimmed up and in a good place, one more flat down and then I can, um, I can clear coat it and then we'll be good. So yeah, it's all rubbed down. So let's go for some very satisfying um, application.
next layer's done. So it's good to see it, um, yeah, that shape and looking kind of finished. So once that's dried, um, I'll trim it up a little bit more, block it down again, another layer. Then I'll have three layers on there. I probably won't do a fourth. I'll probably just, uh, I'll probably just do a, uh, a clear cut once that's all uh, good to go. So yeah, cut to me messing with that again in a few days time. I've filmed this vlog over so many days, I can't actually remember what's going on and where I am in this process because I've uploaded everything to the, uh, uh, that's some nice big spider, uh, I've uploaded everything to the uh, to my computer and I've not kept track of anything. So um, I think last time we were kind of test fitting it, that's all good. I made some slight adjustments, it's fitting really nicely now. Uh, all we've got to do is make the big cutouts for these because I'm not going to copy that because that's going to be way too much work and if it's not perfect I'm, I'm just not going to be happy at all so um, I have done one um, there and it wasn't the angles looked a bit crappy so I've made the uh, the corners a bit bigger a radius for them a bit more so I'm going to um, trim all these bits up again and obviously do this one so I'll show you what I did for there on there Right, so lots of cutting and messing around. Um, I was cutting out those holes for these pieces. So we are all cut out. Um, these bits fit underneath, inside here. I think this is the right one. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. So that fits in there, like that. Nice and simple. Um, pretty happy that I've gone around there and made that nice. Um, I've checked everything clears with the uh, wiper arms, trimmed it all up, so that fits in nicely in there. Shut up on it. My fingers. See, that's not screwed down yet but and in position but we've got nice fitment all the way along everything is good there panel gaps are what they are so everything's good all the fixing holes are good so what I'm gonna do now is flat it down give it one more coat of resin, flat that down, and then give a coat of um, clear lacquer. That resin, that XCR, what I'm using it is um, UV protected, but I'm going to clear coat it anyway because I've done the wings, clear coated them, and the lip. It makes sense to do it, so I'll do that as well. So yeah, let's rub that down some more and give it one more coat.
I've saved you guys the joy of watching me sand down stuff ready to uh, to lacquer it. So um, yeah, everything's down there, ready to prep. Um, for anyone that wants to know, I'm using Pro XL 2K lacquer. If you can get hold of Pro XL stuff, it's absolutely amazing. Um, they do a whole bunch of different products. Uh, I actually get to use this one, but I know that the rest of their stuff is really good. So uh, yeah, hopefully it should be fine. We'll do three coats of this, and then once this is dried, we'll um, you know dean a bit, uh, give it a, a quick buff up, and then um, put it on the car. All right, it's the next day, everything's dry. As you can see, it's looking really good. So all we're gonna do now is hit it with some uh, 2000, 3000, buff it up just to get rid of the uh, dirt spots in there. Stick on the grills and we're done. All right, so just hit that with 2000, gonna hit it with a 3000 or a Trizac. Uh, that's a 3000 right there. I'll, uh, I'll use a DA for that. So 2000, 3000, and then I'll hit it with some compound and um, yeah, that'll be done. I'm just flattening the big surface areas at the moment, so it's obviously very tempting to get carried away and like flat and polish everything, but when it comes to actually polishing everything up, once you've kind of flattened everything down, um, it's an absolute nightmare. So um, yeah, stick to like, the big surfaces and yeah, kind of call it at that. Otherwise, you'll be you'll be there forever, and, and you know, you'll still end up with you know dull marks here and there. So just the big flat areas, that'll be fine. So I'll do the other two. I won't show you that; it's boring. Gonna hit it with the Trizac. That's a three thousand. Um, use it wet uh, on a slow speed as well. And the more work you do with the Trizac. Um, when you're flat and polishing, the less work you have to do when it comes to like, the compound and buffing stage. Um, so just keep them going over it, make sure it's you know, nice and smooth and all the imperfections are gone. Or, you, know, if you, can, you can tell the difference anyway when, you know, when you're going from you know, a 2000 to 3000, you can feel it. So uh, I'll go over that. With the Trizac, uh, it's gonna take a while just because of all the funny shapes. I'll show you one little bit and then we'll buff it. Stick the grills on and yeah, done. All right, next step is the compound um, using a raw uh, cutting compound with the yellow pad. Um, for anyone interested, it's a, uh, it's a Hexlogic pad. I can't remember the, the exact brand, but it's a Hexlogic pad, a uh, yellow one. So we'll go quite easy on this, obviously, because I don't want to catch any edges. It's quite a, a brittle, no, it's not brittle, wrong word. Um, it's quite a delicate piece with lots of sharp edges, so I want to go quite carefully around it. So it'll probably take a while to buff it, but I've done quite a bit of work with the Trizac. Like I said, the more work you do with the Trizac, the less work you have to do with the uh, with the buffing stage. So let's do it. All right, it's all done, polished up, looking good. For a rattle can finish, that is um, pretty outstanding. Uh, yeah, now we've got to stick the grills in, so got some 3M tape. They stick in, um, they'll stick in at the top there underneath, with the tabs at the bottom, so I'll put those in.
Oh, it's finally done. It's finally done. There you go. Look at that. He said scratching it on something. Yeah, that is super freaking cool. That's the ceiling. All right. Uh, yeah, let's get it on. Done it. Uh, yeah, he's done it. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, God damn. Uh, yeah, that's so cool. That's ridiculously cool. It's really hard to see how good it looks, but yeah, it looks real cool. I just wish these uh, aftermarket panels weren't so, uh, weren't so gappy. I mean, I could close the gap here, but it would mean that this is kind of stepped you know, in, in the wrong direction, um, and it would look, it would look crap. So yeah, look at that. That's all done. Um, yeah, I <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was a really long process for me to film and I apologize for it being such a long, maybe tedious video, but the end result is definitely worth it. For such a small piece, I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, I'm super, super happy. Uh, yeah, it just needs um, probably another little little buff because when you buff something, um, it's likely that it will kind of need another going over, a little quick tickle um, a few days after. It's just it's just paint. So um, yeah, it's apart from that, it's yeah, it's good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I mean that's probably the last bit I want to do on the front end. Well, that actually is one more bit I want to do on the front end, but it's really, really minor. Um, obviously, we've got the headlight covers in there. And what I may do in the future, it's hard to see, but I may do um, some little carbon fiber ducts to go in there just to kind of spice up a bit. And obviously, I've got to do, actually, no, I tell a lie, I've got to do the carbon fiber bumper. Um, so I'm not done on the front end. Loads to do still. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Um, if I wasted my time or not, hopefully I didn't. But I'll see you guys real soon. I'm very tired. Bye bye. Subscribe, you fools.